we're good to go. Um, our community is entirely, um, four minutes, okay. Um, our assets entirely, we have uh, very big families. Uh, we have very established networks. Um, we have a range of cultural traditions. Um, and it's primarily, should have said this at the start, it's a large Somali community here. Um, we have a Somali cultural association. We have a, um, a, a well-attended uh, mosque in the area. Um, and lots of small businesses, lots of small business owners, and we have a park. Um, our issues list seems to um, outweigh our assets. Uh, okay, so we, what have we got in our issues? We've got overcrowding. We have um, high levels of um, uh, lack of employment with women or a, a choice not to work. Um, language barriers, particularly for the older generation um, who, who were not born in, in this area. Um, English is not a first language for language at all. We've got tensions between cultures, uh, no organization for people who aren't Somali. Um, the Somali community are not integrated into the rest of Slapham. Uh, what else? Housing Association may, may lose independence. We weren't quite sure what that meant and what the implications were. Um, not much infrastructure or facilities in the area and uh, no prospects of young people. Okay, so we ended up with our two enablers. Um, our first one is Hawa, and she is from the Somali community. She was born in the UK. She's female. She's the mother of a 10-year-old son who's in the process of going to secondary school, so she's going to be around a bit more because he's going to be at school all day. There we are when they're younger, anyway. Um, <laughs> don't have kids. Uh, she's 30 years old, and, as I said, she's from the Somali community. So um, she's, she's never worked in the sense she's had a full or part-time um, job. She's obviously been caring for a child and possibly younger relatives the whole of her life, so she's been incredibly busy. Um, she's come to Slapham as a refugee, um, but she's quite from quite a progressive family. Um, we think now she's probably a single mother. Um, she often shocks people in the Somali um, community, and she is stealthily radical. Um, I'm not quite sure what that looks like, but it sounds really cool. Um, <laughs> she is. Um, she, uh, right, I'll go into the other one. Our other neighbor is Matt. He is much younger. He is originally from Slapham. He has just completed a media and communications degree from the University of Lincoln, uh, majoring in radio production. We had quite a lot of detail. Um, how does she know, or how does he know Hawa? Uh, they were recruited together. We sort of, I think we adopted what we did, the kind of community organizing model for this. So they were recruited together. Um, they vaguely share some connections. Um, they may have gone to school with some similar people, or they kind of know each other. There's some connection there, but they're very loose. Um, right, what are they like? What's Hawa's skill? She's highly personable. Um, she's a stealthy radical, obviously. Um, she's got really strong relationships um, within Tali, uh, within her community. Um, but she's seen as a problem solver, and she knows a bit about the levers um, to pull and the structures of power around her that she's able to kind of influence those. Um, what are Matt's skills? Okay, he's got a massive Facebook community. He's been at university, has thousands of friends, and slows pictures one minute. Anyway, Matt's, Matt's a great guy. Let's move over here. <laughs> um, so we went crazy with our tools. Um, and I think, really, we just started to think more about where the tools fitted into a timescale of community organizing. And in this model, um, it's listening in the first year. The first 51 weeks is about listening, a minimum of 500, it's really building a sense of trust and understanding from the community enablers perspective of what's going on in the community. Um, start building a network. So begin to make those connections, show where the consensus is around particular issues. Here we've had a load of tools that allow you to do that. First of all, we sort of focused on what helps an enabler to organize themselves. Evernote's collaborative research. Stage one, get organized, understand what you can do, and, and start to work together online, saving times, all the good stuff that that brings. Much further down the line, so probably haven't got very long left, we're looking at online communities. We see this as a process that's coming much, much further down the line. Not a first step. You have to work towards this. This is how we've understood it here. Um, and up here, all the kind of... <laughs> and the use of an iPhone to keep time. So that's an important piece of technology. So there you go. Done. <laughs>